Hello and welcome to this short video covering a couple of upgrades I did with my Mono X printer. Two upgrades I highly recommend for anyone who has one of these large format resin printers, as it could save you a ton of grief when things go wrong. Firstly though, I want to apologise for the lack of videos. It's been 7 months since my last proper video upload and I've certainly been feeling the pressure to show something new. The reason for this is because I've been solidly working on another project that I've been teasing about along the way, one I've been giving some updates on at the Replica Props forum. I'm still a few weeks away from completing this project, but once I've got it completed, expect a couple of videos covering its development process in detail. I also want to apologise as I've spent so much time on this other project I've not had the time to get on with the Stargate project. I also feel under pressure to carry on with this project as it's now been well over a year since I started that. As soon as I can I will resume work on the Stargate and hopefully a little video will follow showing its progress. I have also been doing some prep work on some other projects that will follow soon and along with them a new announcement for my Patreon supporters. As you may know if you follow my channel I got myself an Anycubic Mono X resin printer towards the end of last year. The reason for this was to print off some new parts for my Stargate project, replacing the resin parts I had casted before but had issues with resin shrinkage, as well as to print parts for other projects I have in line. Things haven't gone totally smoothly with this printer which is part of the reason why things have been delayed on the Stargate. The printer I got had some faults that needed addressing, including an intermittent faulty masking screen which I had to get two replacements for as the first replacement came damaged. Anycubic really does need to sort out how they pack these displays as they are fragile and the packing is not secure enough to stop the panel shaking around loosely inside the cases. And I also had a slightly curved build plate which I also had to get replaced. While the build plate replacement came quickly, the LCD ended up taking several months as they were out of stock for the parts. I was however able to do some testing with the faulty display and it highlighted some other issues with the design as a whole, and things I felt I had to address. The very first and most obvious issue was the masking display itself. Unlike the Anycubic Photon resin printer, the LCD panel is unprotected. There is no glass between the resin vat and the LCD polarising layer. This means any spills or leakages will likely destroy the display. At least on the Photon, any resin that was to leak and cure could be scraped off with a fresh razor blade. The glass also offered some limited protection against pressure damage caused by loose resin within the vat getting pressed down. This was the main thing that I had to change. I had to figure out a way to get glass on the display. I had originally planned to have this done in January and a video uploaded, but typically as with all of my projects, there was unexpected delays. The first thing I had to do was figure out how to get the screen protector glass that would fit the LCD panel. At this time there was no off the shelf screen protectors for the size, at least none without notches or earphone holes already cut in. When looking around it first appeared that it was possible to laser cut tempered glass, at least according to some loosely suggested videos from China. So at first I ordered some large tablet screen protectors that I could then cut down to size and fit my screen. The plan was to cut the glass so it would fit within the recess here. So after waiting a month for the glass to arrive, I did some test cuts with one of the screen protectors I brought as a sacrificial test, something I could test on to find the best speed and laser intensity for a good clean cut. While I was technically able to cut the glass on my laser cutter, no matter what speed or power I tried to cut the glass at, I always ended up with a really badly burnt lamination material and cracked and rough edges in the glass, so it appeared there simply was no way for me to cut the glass. I have later been told they laser cut the glass before tempering and it's only pre-tempered glass that cuts cleanly. I may be wrong so if anyone knows how best to cut custom glass then please leave a comment. So at this time I decided to stick to the plastic screen protectors so if I was to have a spot I'd at least have some protection. For this I peeled off the tape, placed the screen protector on the glass, laser cut some fresh chlorine free vinyl, also known as eco vinyl. This stuff looks a lot like normal vinyl but it's safe to laser cut as it does not release any chlorine gas that corrodes the metal components inside the cutter. 
I placed this on the screen protector, making sure to seal off the edges and then moved on to the next task. I wanted to install a magnetic build plate for my print bed. In the early days of this printer, I did manage to get a couple of new Stargate parts printing before the LCD issues started to show. But with the base layers covering nearly all of the print bed, it was extremely hard to remove the part, having to resort to a sharp spatula and brute force to do so, occasionally gouging into the aluminium bed in the process. This had to change. If I'm to print loads of these large parts, I needed a better way of doing this. I've been aware of magnetic build plates for FDM printers for a few years, but magnetic build plates for resin printers is actually something pretty new. I saw the prices for magnetic build beds from some of the better known brands, but I felt I needed to save money where I could. So I looked to China and found some magnetic beds being sold on AliExpress, being sold for a fraction of the price. So for £9.50 I ordered the print bed to fit my Mono X. And again waited another month and a bit before they finally turned up. While I was waiting, I discovered that Qi2, the Chinese company that makes the control boards and software for many of these resin printers, have just released their own brand of tempered glass screen protector for the 8.9 inch LCD screens used in these large format resin printers. And also being less than half the price it would have cost me to order a custom tempered glass piece from Germany, I felt it was a perfectly timed bargain. Especially since Brexit has now come into full effect and I would have been faced with import charges and extra handling fees, not to mention that most companies in Europe were not shipping to the UK. The Qi2 screen protector was not available before, otherwise I would have gone with this one right away. So once this arrived I got about installing a replacement LCD panel along with the new screen protector. I didn't want to damage the old display as it may be possible to repair later and I could keep it as a backup. So I carefully removed the black tape and the panel before cleaning up the edges with ice paper alcohol and placing the new LCD panel in place. Soon after the magnetic build plate arrived, I started off with removing the aluminium bed, cleaning up with lots of ice paper alcohol and even gave the bed a fresh little light sanding to remove any grooves that might be too deep for the sticky back magnet to adhere to. And once it was all installed, it all looked good and the flex still stuck to the magnet. And so I did another test print. About halfway through the print I noticed a big problem and cancelled the print. Like all resin this stuff shrinks a bit when curing, so on large thick parts the shrinkage can be more noticeable. And here with the wide base layers, the shrinking strength was so powerful it pulled the flex still away from the magnet at the edges and warped the print. It's only luck that it didn't fall down and crack the newly placed LCD screen. This clearly would not work. Maybe it's an issue with the Chinese brand Flex Bed, but I have been told that these magnetic beds tend to only work on the smaller printers, and the shear pull is too strong for these larger format printers. So here is where I decided to waste even more time by trying to figure out a better magnetic base. I first found a flexible magnet called NeoFlex. This is a neodymium based flexible magnet that is said to be many times stronger than traditional ferrous flexible magnets. And at the time I paid about £40 for this one A5 sheet. When I received it I was not convinced that this magnet was that much stronger than the original flex magnet. So I returned it and got a refund and then started looking up buying various neodymium magnets online. But here tons of time was wasted as nearly all the shops I ordered the magnets from ended up sending magnets that were nowhere near the strength they indicated or the measurements for the magnets were way off. I took one last try and ended up ordering some magnets off AliExpress and after waiting nearly two months for them to finally arrive, yet again, the magnets were nowhere near the indicated strength, nor did they measure up correctly. I realised that some loose tolerances are expected, but anything over 1mm is just not right. If I order a 3mm thick magnet, I don't expect to get 1.5 or 2mm thick magnets, or their width and height being anywhere up to 2mm different to what I ordered. And it wasn't these magnets were all different either, they all measured exactly the same to each other, but it just didn't come close to the measurements given. So these were clearly just being missold. So all the designs I came up with to fit the magnets into a plastic frame of a set thickness to mount onto the build plate wouldn't work. 
So I decided after wasting several months of my time to take another look at the Neoflex. But amazingly, this time I had managed to find the same Neoflex being sold on Amazon for only £10. And not the original £40 I paid before, so I thought I'd give it another try. By this point it was July and I needed to get this upgrade done. I ordered the flex bed and when it came the next day I started getting to work. I took the original aluminium bed that came with the printer and started sanding it back against a granite and a glass sheet. I had to make this as true flat as possible, taking as much of the curve away as I could. After a good long time sanding I managed to get it to something I was comfortable with. I then measured and cut the Neoflex mount to size and after giving the bed another fiery clean with IPA I started to fit the magnet. Right away I realised I should have gone with this in the first place. This time the flex still held onto the magnet really well. Oh well, I may have wasted many months of my time trying the other magnets but it only cost me 10 quid this time round. I prepped up a print and set up my camera for another time lapse. I am sorry for this footage, I really should remember to lock off the camera's focus but here we are. The first test print failed but this was my fault. I paused the print part way to see how it was going and this must have somehow disrupted the previous layer's cure time. And so when I resumed the print layer didn't adhere properly and the print failed. I removed the fail part and started the print again. This time the print completed without issue and success. The print shrinkage didn't pull the flex plate away from the magnet. It worked. It did take a fair bit of effort to remove the plate from the magnet but this little extra effort is better than hammering away with a spatula. However, things are not perfect. After removing the build plate I realised that the Neoflex magnet started to look a little rough around the edges. I think the rubber may be reacting to the solvents in the resin and this might be breaking down the medium that the magnet is held in. I'm going to keep an eye on this and I may need to look at ways to sealing this and protecting it from the resin. But for now it seems to be working. So there we have it. Two upgrades I did for my large resin printer. One of these I highly recommend everyone does if they own one of these large format printers. Get the tempered glass screen protector, it really is a no brainer. Now that these are readily available to buy, no one has any excuse not to. If I had any gripe about the screen protector offered, it's that it's cut to size to just cover the polarizer portion of the display within the black tape, where I would have preferred to have the glass reach the ends of the LCD panel and the black tape placed over the screen protector, sealing the panel better from any spillage. But what we have now is still better than nothing at all. Again, I do apologise for the lack of new videos from me. Hopefully there will be some new videos coming in the next few weeks as I get this current project finished. Also, I have some news coming regarding my Patreon coming soon. If you want to help support me and my projects, please consider joining my Patreon or please consider placing a one-off donation to my GoFundMe. Any money made here goes directly towards funding my projects and I have some big expensive projects coming soon, one of which I am very eager to announce and get started. Please also consider subscribing if you haven't done so already, as the boosts I've seen in views has really helped me keep motivated to work on these very complex projects I have going. Thanks again for watching, stay safe and take care. Bye!